Alright, so I've got my PRS SC here um, tuned up to uh, E standard. Plugged into my AVH 5153 on the green channel. Um, so, like I said before, I had some problems once I got the uh, trim bar in there and kind of just using it, just not even really pushing hard on it. It would detune the guitar and stick. And I'm pretty sure it's because this nut either um, it's filed too, uh, it's not filed wide enough in the slots or there's, it just needs to be lubed up. So like I said, I got some of that Nomad stuff, but I just kind of want to show you what it was doing um, before and after we use this stuff to see if it works. So here we go. This is the straight open G chord. I use the trim bar. So I think it kind of got to fly a little bit there. So I retuned it back up. So after slimming, here I'll slim on the bar. So you can hear it going out of tune. Some of the notes haven't, but some of them have. So let's put on, I'll go uh, move the camera into the other room and we'll get to putting the Nomad stuff on here. I'm gonna lube the nut here and I'm also going to put some in the saddles here. Um, and who knows, maybe it'll help, maybe it won't, but either way, we'll find okay, out. Okay guys, so, so for what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna loosen all these strings Because technically you're supposed to do this with the strings off, but what I'm going to do is just loosen them at least enough to take them out of the slot here and just do what I need to do and I'll tighten it back up as each one as I go. Um, I'll also do the, uh, the saddle as well. So what I'm using here is this, uh, I don't know if you can see it's probably out of focus, it's the Nomad, Music Nomad. Tune it, um, string lubrication. So we'll try and see if you know if this helps out any at all. I'm not gonna just do the one slot that I was having issues with. I'm just gonna do them all, just to because there's no point in just doing one. And um, it comes with these. I don't know what these are. I don't know if they're just like little applicators to kind of get dig in there. I guess that's what I'm gonna use it for. Um, so I'm gonna take the string out of the slot and I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. And it comes out, it, it looks like Neosporin is what it looks like. Um, but I'm just gonna rub it all in there with that applicator. And I'll do the same thing to the, the saddle just where the, the string sits in the saddle. Put that back on. And I'm just gonna tighten, get the tension back on the string. I'm not gonna tune it up yet. Just get the tension back. And we'll do that to this one as well. Putting a little bit, like a little sliver of it in that slot and using the applicator to kind of get it all around in there. 
And you could use a toothpick for this as well. I'm sure it will work just as well, but I'm just gonna use, you know, this because it came with it. So I might as well use it. Um, this was the slot that I was having issues with the most. So, and I don't, I mean, this may need to be widened. I really don't know. But I figured I would try this first because I really didn't want to, you know, mess with the, the nut if I didn't actually have to take any material out of it. So we'll try this first and, you know, see if this helps out at all. So we'll get that down in there. Put some more down here at the saddle. And again, this stuff, I'm just using just a little bit of it. It's not a whole lot. Put that back in there. I'm gonna try to use the string just a little bit to work that in and get off any of the stuff that I can. Get out of there. All right, and we'll just re-tighten that string back up. shouldn't hurt any of the finish or anything but you know I'm I really don't know so I'm just gonna clean it up as I go just to make sure that you know there's nothing stuck in there or sorry that you know falls on the fretboard or anything like that I'm just gonna clean that up as I go because you just never know and off the nut. Let me get my stuff here. Maverick, get out of here. There's my dog. All right, we'll clean that off. And it does seem to be helping a little bit using the string to work it in there a little bit because this applicator doesn't actually get, especially in the, the high E and stuff, it's this applicator one thing will not get in there and the toothpick definitely will not. So you may have to use your string to get that kind of work to inside there. Um, but clean it up with the cloth and good on the front. Let's get the back end here. Get the stuff working on the saddles. Yeah. That looks good. And wipe the excess off of there as well. And we'll go ahead and... Okay, so we got it all in the nut there side and we've also got it on the saddles. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing back up to tune and we'll see you in the next part right. of the video. We're back here. Um, I've got the SC all tuned up. I think for the most part back to E standard um, and hooked up back to the EVH5153 and this is just a clean channel so let's go ahead and uh, just check her out.
I mean, I think it's working fine. Um, <clears throat> it was uh, easier to use than the uh, pencil um, lead that I had tried before. Um, and, you know, did both the saddles as well as the, the nut. Um, and again, I'll kind of keep trying it out and, and see if I have any other future issues with it or see how long it lasts, if, if it stays in tune longer for a week or if, I have to, if it's something I have to keep applying. Um, but for now, I'm going to say, yeah, I mean, I think I paid six bucks for that um, delivered to my door from Amazon. Um, I'll leave a link to it in the description below in case anyone else uses Amazon. I'm pretty sure you can get a Guitar Center as well um, if, if you want to do that, if you're looking for something like this. Um, for a, a, the price, I just don't see how you can beat it. Um, and I think that stuff you can put in your tuning keys if you've got open-faced um, if you've got open -faced tuners in the back. Oh, these are closed. But if you've got open tuners, you can throw it in there as well. helps grease that up. Um, you know, really, any any trim system where the saddles are, it'll work well too. It wasn't runny at all. It was more like, like I said, it was like neosporiny pasty type is what it kind of felt like to me. But it wasn't oily. I don't know how else to explain it. But um, you know, like I said, for six bucks, um, I'll leave a, a link to uh, to the location I got it from Amazon. Um, if you want to check it out, I don't get any money back for any of this stuff. But this is going to be easier for you guys to find if you wanted it. Um, again. I really like this guitar. It's actually the first time I've had gotten to play in a week, two couple weeks or so, because I've been um, messing around with a couple of my other guitars. Um, but this worked out fine. Um, so yeah, I suggest it's a it's a good product to use, um, especially if you're looking for something to to fix that uh, you know pitch uh, shift that you've got going on. So um, just kind of a, a few a thing before I end up this, in this video. Um, I've got two Harley Bentons coming. Um, one is the one of the, uh, one of them is the Fusion Two Roasted Maple <clears throat> um, Flamed Maple Neck Fusion Pro, I think is what it's called, um, from Toman. And another one is their uh, the Harley Benton CTS Hardtail 24, which is basically the Harley Benton uh, tribute. I won't say copy. It's a tribute to. Uh, you know, basically this guitar. I won't say it's a tribute to the actual Custom 24 just because um, of the way the the, the body's carved and, and everything, but it's essentially the same thing. Uh, but I've got two of those coming. They should be here this week. So I'm gonna do an unboxing and review of both of those and um, some things I'm gonna do those because I plan on fixing up at least one of those. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. It just depends. You know, I've never played a Harley Benton before and I saw the videos for them and, and a couple of reviews and stuff on YouTube about them and I thought, hey, you know, check them out. And they were cheap. You know, I think I paid like $500, $550 for both guitars, um, you know, shipped to my house. So, you know, we'll check them out. And um, I'll kind of let you know, at least from my standpoint, because again, I'm not a professional musician. You know, it's more of a hobby. I'm kind of addicted to guitars. Don't really, I'm not really good at playing them, I don't think. Um, but I like playing them and I like messing with them and tinkering with them and seeing what I can do with them. So, yeah, um, from an intermediate player's perspective, you know, I'll see if these guitars are worth checking out or if they're just, you know, skip them and go right to the, you know, the more mainstream stuff like this um, instead of the stuff you might have to tinker with a bit. If you're into that type of stuff, I'm sure they're great guitars. Either way, we'll find out. I'm running along too long in this video already. So thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to like and um, subscribe to the channel if you want to see other stuff. Um, I do games as well, so I've got a couple videos coming out here soon in the next couple weeks that I'm going to do on a couple game reviews. So thanks for hanging out, and um, I'll see you next time.